check, 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 check. All right, what is up? Check, 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 check. This is, this is how you film a video by yourself. All right, what is up everybody? Today's video is all about our new iOS app 3.8. We just released a bunch of new features, seven free day trial, bunch of other cool stuff. But my personal favorite is the fact that you can now shoot raw burst in our app. A lot of people use burst to capture one image, which makes tons of sense because if you're shooting skateboarding or some kind of action, you need to shoot a burst in order to catch that action at the exact moment that you want. But what a lot of people don't realize is you can take all those photos and turn that into an animation. So with that one scene, you get tons of different assets. So you can post just that one photo that you love, or you can take all those photos, turn it into an animation, post it on Instagram, show all your friends, maybe you get tons of likes. It's like guaranteed at least like a thousand likes for sure, right? I actually don't know if it's gonna get you more likes, but I know it looks cool. For the sake of today's video, we will be mainly in Lightroom and then Adobe Premiere. You can also do this in Photoshop and After Effects. There are also some phone apps, mainly GIF X, I believe, and then also GIF Maker. Um, those are super cool. Not gonna dive in, into those today. I think GIF Maker is kind of expensive, but um, if you click the link below to the Momentous article, then we will lay out not only how to do this in Adobe programs, but how to do this in those apps as well. Let's, uh, Let's dive in. All right, so first off, to shoot a burst is super easy. All you're gonna do is open the Moment app, make sure you're in the seven day free trial or that you have already purchased the app. It's um, just, as about as, just about as much as a latte, which you know I love. So what you're gonna do right here under JPEG, you can switch to JPEG or RAW, and then there'll be a little toggle here for burst mode off or burst mode on. You'll know it's on when there is a B stands for burst, and you'll know it's off when there's just a one, and one obviously just stands for a single photo. You'll know that you're shooting a burst mode for sure. When you go to click the shutter, you do a full press, and in the bottom right corner, you're gonna see a bunch of numbers, which obviously stands for how many photos you've taken. And then you just let go, and then all those will immediately save to your camera roll. All right, so the next step in this process is getting those photos onto your computer. You're gonna go into the Moment Camera Roll, select all the photos and airdrop them to your computer. After that, you're gonna upload them into Lightroom and this is where you're gonna color correct. What I usually do is I'll color correct the first image or an image that I want. I'll batch select everything and then I'll sync the settings so you have a very consistent look throughout the whole piece. You don't want um, to edit each photo individually because then it'll kind of look blotchy and inconsistent. After that, you're gonna go to export and then when you go to export, um, pick the location of where you want it to be exported, title it, and then turn on the number so that you have an order from one to however many photos you've taken. That way you know you have the exact order. From there, you're gonna open your Premiere project, you're gonna click import, and when you click import, you're gonna highlight the very first photo of that sequence, and then you're gonna select options and select image sequence, and this is gonna import everything as a video file. Once you've imported your images into Premiere, it'll come in as a video file. It'll be a 30 frames per second video file standard. My favorite settings for this next part is basically to interpret that to a 24 frames per second video file and then put that in a 10 frames per second timeline. And you get a nice like kind of blotchy, like blocky stop motion feel, which I personally really like. This is where you can really do whatever you want. Like you can play with frame rates, you can play with your sequence settings, you can keyframe things, you can zoom in, zoom out, you can loop things. And this is where now we're gonna get into some tips on how to make your animations dope. All right, so the first tip is to shoot the whole scene. A lot of times when you're shooting verse, you're just gonna shoot the action. So let's say someone's running through frame or doing something, running at you, skateboarding, whatever. A lot of people just, they wanna just shoot the action. But if you shoot, shoot the whole scene, so that's before the action and after the action, you get this mini stop motion movie that I love. It's different, it stands out, it doesn't look like a video, but it also is clearly like a creative way to, to use these burst animation photos. And again, you can post the photo as well as the animation. 
All right, the next tip is this is a great way to fake a 3D photo. 3D photos, how they work is basically you have a camera, you have a bunch of lenses, they all take a photo at the same time and then it kind of bounces back and forth. Basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your phone, you're gonna shoot a burst and you're just gonna go a little bit to the side. You're probably gonna shoot anywhere from 20 to 35 photos and then when you're in Premiere, you're just gonna basically make them bounce back and forth. You'll put your file in the timeline, it'll run through, duplicate that and then reverse it and then it'll just bounce back and forth and you wanna duplicate that as many times as you how long you want your video to be. Now, I will say the caveat to this is there can't be any motion in the background or else it'll be obvious that it's not a 3D photo. So in all these examples, you'll see that the background is stationary and basically it just bounces back and forth. The next tip is how to make your own boomerang in loop. So if you've ever been in Instagram stories, which I'm sure all of you have, you can post a boomerang. So you either make things loop where it kind of is this continuous motion. So here's a shot of Caleb and he basically runs through the frame, runs back out and then it just, and I keep looping it. So it's almost like it never ends. And that's a great way to keep your audience engaged on what you post. And the other way is to make things go forward and then backward, forward, and then backward. But what's cool is unlike a boomerang in Instagram, you can make it go forward, backward, backward, glitch, you can do all kinds of things. So basically you can create your own boomerang and just spice it up a little bit. The last tip I have for you guys is to freeze the action. So this is where uh, you'll see in time lapses or hyper lapses, you basically have your subject stationary, maybe doing a small action or something. And then you have the background, there's a bunch of motion. So you freeze the action so that the background, there's kind of this chaos, there's a bunch going on. Um, but your subject is either moving very slowly or is just completely stationary. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. That is a crash course in burst animations. Again, it is getting multiple assets with just shooting one thing, but you can turn that series of photos into a pretty cool animation, um, which just kind of just spices up your social media feed. We put Instagram in the title, but you can really do this for any social media. So yeah, um, that's kind of all I have for today. Fully out of coffee, so I'm gonna go get some of that. And you know how we do these outros. We just kind of ramble and, and hang out. But um, as always, we'll see you in the next one.